I'm Andrea. I'm Kanad. Um, and we're learning about, uh, well, we did our project on two different things. One was vertical seepage measurements in a lake, and another is examining the concentration of methylmercury. So we worked with um, Roger Pacheco Castro in vertical seepage measurements in a lake, and we worked with Serena Pham in examining the concentration of several methylmercury species. All, of, all under the supervision of Dr. Mingye. Okay, so first up with Mr. Pacheco, we did um, two preliminary experiments. We did a Darcy and a Prosty experiment. The, Dar the Darcy experiment was in order to determine um, the permeability of this particular type of sand, which we needed in order to accurately measure um, the flow in the big tank experiment that we were going to do. Yeah. One of the things that we need, uh, the Darcy is essentially the father of uh, Darcy's law. He, and hydrogeology. Yeah, he created a law that basically uh, implements the factors into what uh, flowing water is. So uh, we were trying to test that out using the, uh, the tubes. And one of the subsets was that we needed the porosity of the sand. Because uh, a lot of times uh, people assume that uh, it's uni the sand grains are uniform, and that's why there is a lot of complications. So we had to, uh, but it's not always the case. For example, this grain of sand, uh, this bag of sand could have multiple sized grains, which could affect the outcome of Darcy's law. So therefore, we had to conduct a small mini experiment for the porosity lab, and where we found the porosity of the sand. So once we determined the K value, which is how um, where the how the water flows, so it's typically denoted in feet per mile per day. So it's the vertic um, the diagonal flow of water. We um, we actually used ModFlow, which is another um, it's a geophysical um, program and using Python, which allows us to model groundwater um, and surface flow. Based on the graph here, you see that the red line on top is. The ModFlow software, uh, when we put in the specific parameters, and the orange line here is our experimental data. Now, what we're trying to find is K, which is the permeability. So Darcy's law here is Q over A, which is the rate of flow in a given area, is equal to negative K times the derivative of a, DH over DL, which is the difference D in head. Yeah. Difference in head over the length of the tube. So if we put the Q and A on one, very, uh, one side and the DHDL on the other, the slope is what we find. And the slope is K. K. So as we can see, the, uh, the model uh, for mod flow was able to accurately predict what we got in our experiment. And we got pretty um, consistent results. So this is the big tank that I mentioned earlier. It's found in the Keen building, the basement in the geophysical, in the Department of Geophysical Studies. Um, it's filled with about 150 pounds of sand. Um, if you see the two red lines in the cor uh, on the rightmost corner, the bottom line um, signifies the surface of the lake, and the top line signifies the height of the water when the lake was fully filled. On the bottom left corner, you can see the apparatus we use, which we kind of had to build because we kept uh, it, we couldn't get accurate, consistent results at first. So we had to find a way to measure it, and we ended up um, building that, which we used to measure um, how much flow the lake was, um, how much flow there was at the surface of the lake. So basically, what we did with this uh, lake setup was we took the flow at different uh, places in, within the lake on one dimension. And uh, the orange, of course, is uh, at, well, at one point, and the red is at a different point. What we saw was that the results were not consistent because the sand was not evenly packed. This, again, goes back to the point that we can't really get evenly packed sand. So what we did in order to account for that error was that at the same point in one dimension, we moved the tube which, with which we measured the, f um, the flow in the, uh, in, the, in the perpendicular dimension. 
and this is the results we got. So originally we hypothesized before taking the, the data from the second point that the, that the error would be consistent with linearly, but um, what we found was that you'd have to take the error at each point because the flow would be affected differently at each point. In addition to that, we did speciation modeling. Yeah, speciation is basically the distribution of a chemical through a set of species, chemical species within a system. And using speciation, uh, we can control the concentration of the products based on the concentration of the reactants. And uh, we can also trace it. And using the process of speciation, we can uh, find things in, in our environment, such as the toxicity of a chemical or the bioavailability of a certain chemical in the environment. Now, we uh, use the software FreakC, which is a um, aqueous geochemical speciation software. And it can do stuff like equilibrium reactions and thermodynamic data. Basically, it has all constants of, uh, we insert constants that are gained uh, experimentally, and from there, it can model reactions uh, as if it was in an environment to an accuracy that is that can go undepend, uh, undetected by experimental methods. So, uh, our case study, like what we were doing specifically with speciation, would be uh, the analysis of methyl mercury in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. There were there were some nuclear uh, experiments. Uh, like nuclear weapons experiments that were going on. And because of that, uh, methylmercury started to get introduced into the environment. And methylmercury is, um, is very dangerous. Uh, it's a neurotoxin which if you come in contact to, you can die within the year. But if you ingest, you can die within the month. So as the, um, we were studying what kinds of parameters would cause the methylmercury concentration to increase. So basically we, well, using Freak C, the software, we're able to examine certain uh, percentages of certain compounds. So as the pH goes up, you can see the relationship of certain chemicals. And that we also apply that to temperature. So you notice here that this graph is from 0 to 100%, and you're able to see the two dominant chemicals as the temperature rises. But using the Freak C software, we can even go to a hundredth of a percent of the availability of certain chemicals. Uh, and that's something that is very hard to detect uh, by experimental methods because it's hard to replicate these things. Uh, and we found that uh, of all the things, as you increase both the pH and the temperature, one chemical stands out as increasing, and that is methylmercury uh, hydroxide. Yeah. So in our conclusions is that we found that there was a major difference between the, um, the results that we got from our tank experiment and ModFlow, our difference was approximately three times the results that ModFlow got. So there was either, um, so either our methods had a large, um, a large amount of error as that model can be. Since it's such a small model compared to an actual lake, um, our actual meddling with the model of inserting the tube to measure the flow caused more error than we expected or we um, messed up in inputting things in the program. Another, um, and in, so, so there was those problems that we arose, co but it was consistently three times more than the points generated by ModFlow. And that's uh, the two major things that we did, the free, uh, speciation software and the groundwater flow. While they're different conceptually, what we did with them are similar. We basically, uh, use software that emulates it because it's hard to predict or to and take actual value um, actual uh, data at, in the real world because it's very difficult to use instruments and not and you don't always have access to all the elements or all the all the points in a lake thank you